Hi, I'm Alistair MacDonald and what I'm going to do is present uh, to you something that Colin Warwick and I have produced, uh, giving a glimpse of the history of the Dick Vet uh, during William Dick's time. Now, who was William Dick? William Dick founded the Vet School and he was born in 1793 in Whitehorse Close in the Canongate in Edinburgh. His parents, uh, Jean Anderson and John Dick, had come down to Edinburgh from Aberdeenshire, and that's up in the east, northeast of Scotland. John Dick was a farrier, uh, uh, that's somebody who puts the iron horse, uh, iron hooves on, on horses. And horses were, of course, the, the main means of transport back in those days. As well as shoeing the horses, uh, John Dick would probably have been asked by his clients to treat horses, uh, maybe injuries they had or diseases they had and perhaps even perform some surgical operations. Young William Dick grew up learning the farriery trade from his dad, who also encouraged him to read books by fellows like uh, James Clark and others. Uh, now Clark was also a farrier uh, in Edinburgh uh, who had attended uh, classes in comparative anatomy at the University of Edinburgh, but he had also written books on how to uh, uh, give improved veterinary care to, to animals. And in 1790, he had wanted to establish a veterinary school in Edinburgh, but finances and other considerations uh, prevented him from doing so. At 1815, um, at the age of 22 years, William Dick, uh, in his turn, attended comparative anatomy lectures uh, in Edinburgh. And these were given by uh, Dr. John Barclay, in Surgeon Square in Edinburgh. With this knowledge inside him, uh, a couple of years later, in 1817, he set off for London uh, by coach and he went to the Royal Veterinary College uh, in London. And after only three months, uh, he was awarded a certificate that now indicated he was a qualified veterinary surgeon. He returned to Edinburgh and later that year, and that's now in 1818, he began teaching veterinary anatomy and clinical practice uh, to small groups of students, uh, largely uh, farriers, young farriers like himself. With the encouragement of his mentor, uh, Dr. Barclay, who had uh, really taken a shine to him, uh, William Dick formally founded his own veterinary school in 1823. Uh, he had received financial assistance for this uh, from the Highland Society. And the Highland Society was a group of uh, gentlemen who had gathered together in order to encourage improvements in Scottish agriculture. And Dr. Barclay was one of the directors of the Highland Society. The main objective behind the Highland Society and its support for William Dick was to provide a sound education in veterinary medicine to young men from all parts of Scotland. Uh, the veterinary course presented by William Dick lasted for six months and uh, it cost his students about two pounds, two shillings in those days. The 23 students that his first class uh, uh, included <laughs> were largely farriers and blacksmiths. <clears throat> However, Dick also taught students of agriculture at the University of Edinburgh uh, and these were classified by him uh, as uh, non-qualifying amateurs. Uh, they also included country gentlemen and members of the Highland Society and of course others who were just naturally curious. Five years later in 1828 uh, Dick set up a fairly rigorous examination for his students and this was a, a public oral examination carried out by six uh, quite prominent uh, medical practitioners in town. Uh, and the Highland Society then awarded a diploma to all of those who had passed the exam. In the autumn of 1829, William Dick transferred his course of lectures uh, to Clyde Street in Edinburgh's new town. This was where the Dick family now lived and where his father had a smithy and a forge. Uh, Dick also increased the length of his course uh, to two years. 
The number of students in 1833 had reached uh, 60. And with the money saved from his veterinary practice uh, and um, from his father, the, Dick personally financed the building of the first veterinary school in, Edin in Scotland. This was on the Clyde Street site in Edinburgh uh, and replaced the cramped old house where he had been teaching for the last four years. Later, his veterinary school came to be known as the Dick Vet. Mary Dick was uh, William's sister and she had also not married. Uh, but she managed the school's finances and paid attention to the behaviour of the students and was very much respected by them. She is depicted here as an elderly lady and sadly we do not have a picture of her when she was a feisty young woman. The curriculum of the Edinburgh Veterinary School covered many agriculturally important animal species, not just the horse as was the case down in London. Uh, this important difference was reflected in the carved sandstone frieze that William Dick arranged to be built into the front of his new uh, Clyde Street Veterinary School building. Uh, four pairs of sculpted animal heads were depicted, uh, the horse, the dog, the bull and the ram, with a wild stag in the centre. Up until 1840, William Dick had been the sole teacher in the veterinary college, and in 1840 his school was redesignated as a veterinary college. He was given the title of professor, and annual attendance at his lectures increased to 80 students. He therefore began to employ well-qualified individuals to assist him. That initiated an ongoing trend in Dick Vet staffing. Gradually, William Dick bought other properties in the Clyde Street courtyard until his college fully occupied the site. By this time, as well as having a full teaching commitment, uh, Dick ran a veterinary practice, uh, served on the Edinburgh Town Council, and was veterinary surgeon to the young Queen Victoria in Scotland. It was also in this year, 1840, that the word royal uh, appeared in the name of the Edinburgh Veterinary College. Now in this group photograph, taken about 150 years ago, staff and students are posed inside the Clyde Street courtyard. The royal crest is displayed on the courtyard wall, and that, is, uh, that belongs to Queen Victoria before she married Albert. William Dick is seated prominently with his top hat and walking stick at the front. This mural is now displayed in our new teaching building on the Easterbush campus near Edinburgh. Such was William Dick's knowledge of horses that he was able to diagnose the presence of lameness in any horse that trotted along the cobble street outside uh, in Clyde Street outside his lecture theatre window and he would raise questions and comment on what he heard. During Dick's life his veterinary college became world-renowned and educated men, and they were all men in those days, from around the globe came to his uh, veterinary college. This worldwide tradition is one that is continuing to this day with students from over 220 countries having studied in the Dick Vet. Some of the former Dick Vet students have founded veterinary colleges in other countries, uh, for example in Canada, South and North America and in Australia. Other former students have gone on to become principals in veterinary colleges. In 1866, William Dick died, aged 73, having fulfilled his dream. The running of his college was passed on to the Edinburgh Town Council as trustees. His legacy is that the veterinary school uh, grew from humble beginnings in the courtyard of Clyde Street to become a major, modern and world-renowned veterinary institution. The memory of William Dick and the subsequent history of the Royal Dick School of Veterinary Studies are depicted in sculptures like these and in paintings throughout the new building at Easter Bush. In order to find out more information about the history of the Dick Vet, uh, you should go to the course website.